It is Sunday School. And if I'm sure the video is starting here, it says I'm alive. It's Sunday School, and today we're going to uh, talk about a, a wedding. Now, this is, uh, most of you recognize, this is the lover's card in the Thoth Tarot. And what we've got here are some alchemical symbols. we got a white eagle, a white lunar kind of female eagle. And then we've got a red lion, sort of male, sulfury kind of solar uh, alchemical thing. And then we've got this Orphic egg that's kind of showing up as the guest of honor, really. And we got Cain and Abel there as as the white child or the the, the two uh, uh, positive and negative uh, children that assist in a Gnostic mass. Of course, we've got the the couple there being being married. We got the black king with his solar crown. And we've got the white uh, queen with her lunar her lunar crown, and uh, they're holding hands there. Uh, actually, see that's her hand in his hand. That's not the that's not the penis of the the. <laughs> they're not reaching under the hermit's robe there and grabbing his. Uh, uh, and there's the Holy Grail. She's holding the the Holy Grail, and he's holding the lance. Okay, it's all very out, and uh, the guy who is uh, uh, making the sign of the inter over them, uh, blessing them with uh, the, the helix there, uh, Mobius strip, and it, like in all lovers' cards, there's a, there's a Cupid or an Eros. Uh, getting ready to, to fling an arrow in one direction or another. Okay, it's, oh, and the figures in the corner there are, are uh, Eve and Lilith. And Crowley is trying to get absolutely everything uh, biblical in our, in our <laughs> the esoteric uh, secrets of absolutely everything he could think of in this alchemical wedding here. And he actually says it's a it's a version or an illustration of the alchemical wedding of Christian Rosenkreutz. And we see sort of an arch of steel there. Those are swords, uh, like an arch of steel. So uh, there's that. Now, this is the Gemini card and uh, 180 degrees away just opposite of Gemini in the Zodiac is Sagittarius. And uh, here we have, have uh, uh, some of these same characters showing up. But look, the eagle has turned red and the lion has turned white. And the, the, the solar lion, who's now white, is having water poured on him. And the eagle, who used to be white and is now red, is having fire poured poured on her. And uh, the black king and the white queen have sort of smashed together, like in the deodorant co commercial where the couple run at each other uh, on the beach and hug. Okay, And that Orphic egg now that we saw at the very beginning has got itself in the process of going through the, the tarot trumps here. It's got himself alchemically fertilized and is now getting ready to hatch out of that giant egg in back of the, the angel there of the, this card. Now, Sagittarius is associated with, with the goddess Diana. And if you'll look at all of those globes there uh, on the on the chest of this character, uh, it might be hard to uh, 
imagine at first, uh, but those are the the multiple breasts, bare breasts of the statue, famous statue of Diana of Ephesus. Okay, who just has uh, a plunging neckline with just lots and lots of breasts. So that's our, <laughs> believe it or not, I'm surprised I didn't think of that the very first time I saw it, but I had to kind of sort of figure that out myself. Anyway, why am I showing you this? Because on Sunday school, to, somebody put up a, a, a meme that uh, made it to my uh, Facebook page, something to the effect of um, uh, uh, within religion, you you uh, you worship or or uh, yeah you worship the the messenger but in spirituality you worship the message or you follow the message or follow the follow the the the, the messenger the the idea of being uh, uh spirituality transcends transcends uh uh, uh religion and usually religion uh, uh, many times becomes uh, uh, a device that short circuits, <laughs> that stubs your spirituality uh, toward a per particular limited uh, point of view. And so I've always been uh, uh, reticent, okay, to... Uh, uh, call the the religion of Thelema a religion because it's not although uh, I'm sad to say that that many people that that uh, espouse Thelema and consider themselves uh, Thelemites uh, are in the process of worshiping the messenger rather than the the, than the, the message. I know Crowley's a colorful character and it's fun to, to, to uh, 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 you know, follow his, his, uh, his life and his life, lifestyle as a, as a historical, you know, spiritual messenger. But uh, you don't want to fall into the trap of being a Crowley worshiper, okay? He was a guy like every other guy with skin, skin of tan and cheeks of gold or whatever. Okay. Uh, so it's it, when people say, what religion are you? Okay. I, I sort of cringe because w even when they say the word religion, they're already probably thinking of a whole different concept of, uh, of uh, than I am. Okay, so uh, uh, you know I tell people, well, I'm a, uh, a Gnostic Catholic. I'm a clergy in in uh, in a religion, I guess you would you would call it. But it's really hard to, to explain the nuance of that to the person sitting next to you on the airplane. But anyway, be that as it may, uh, because the Gnostic Mass is uh, a ceremony that, that's uh, uh, celebrated in a, in a public or semi-public uh, manner regularly all over, all over the world, and for many people, it's their, their first introduction to magic. It's their first introduction to uh, uh, Thelema, the first uh, introduction to, uh, to, to lots of things. Uh, and because of that, because it has a churchy-like effect to it, because it has pageantry and beauty and music and... and uh, 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 fellowship that uh, that most religions uh, uh, have and encourage. Uh, it's it's very easy for people 
uh, couples who, who fall in love and and want to, you know, formally be recognized by the community and, and uh, their family and everything as being married, if you will, officially. Uh, the Gnostic Mass is uh, is a beautiful, beautiful uh, ceremony that uh, uh, can uh, serve to uh, uh, be that that formal recognition uh, ceremony. Crowley even mentions uh, when it comes time to take communion, uh, uh, when everybody else. The entire congregation takes communion. Uh, in the in the case of a marriage ceremony, just the bride and groom, or the couple being married, uh, uh, take communion. So Crowley suggests, yeah, you can use this this mass as a, as a wedding ceremony, or a coming of age, or anything anything it's just it's a celebration of this it's a celebration of this and this is a magical act that is like uh if you will a cosmic spiritual explosion it's a magic ceremony it's a magic ceremony that that uh, manipulates, if you will, directs, arouses, and and uh, discharges a great spiritual energy. That means it's appropriate for anything, funerals, weddings, or just your own Eucharistic. I want to manifest my heart's desire ceremony. I found today, going as I was uh, doing my own research on my own book, that uh, I ran across uh, a wedding ceremony that uh, I officiated, Constance and I officiated, because the whole first part of this ceremony is uh, uh, about three quarters of a of a full Gnostic Gnostic Mass. Uh, but a number of years ago, we uh, married uh, 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 a couple, uh, OTO members, uh, magicians themselves, and 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 friends, and uh, uh, this is how. We utilize certain uh, modular formula f uh, from the Gnostic Mass and the Book of the Law and things like that into uh, uh, a marriage ceremony that's inserted toward the very end of a standard Liber 15 uh, Gnostic Mass. And I'd like to share it with you today because it's Sunday School. And this was many years ago. Uh, you know, I would probably throw this together in a totally different way uh, nowadays, but it, it seemed to work okay. The congregation is admitted and seated for Gnostic Mass. The groom, who carries a wooden wand, and his best man, who is armed with a ceremonial sword and carries the bride's ring, are seated to the north of the tomb in the west. There's music. All rise as the bride, carrying the bouquet of yellow roses, enters with her bridesmaid, who is armed with a ceremonial sword. So there's two swords involved here. And carries the groom's ring. The bride and bridesmaid take their seats to the south of the tomb in the west. All resume their seats, or all the congregants. The mass the Gnostic Mass begins and proceeds according to Liber 15 until the two to be married have partaken in communion and return to their seats. None but the two to be married communicate, or in other words, they're the only two that, that took communion when it was time for the uh, to communicate. 
Uh, earlier on during the colics, the deacon strikes the bell at the beginning of uh, the colic number nine, which is marriage. Let all who this day unite with love under will fall success. Or may all who unite this day in, uh, in love under will let fall success. May strength and skill unite to bring forth ecstasy and beauty answer beauty. Ding! The deacon stands near the high altar. The priest advances and stands before the shrine in the east facing the congregation. So this is this is after the really you after the big climax of the of the Gnostic mass. It, it's it's about 15 20 minutes into uh, into the ceremony, almost to the end of a, of a ceremony when this all starts. Uh, I, as the officiator, is probably on the floor before the first step of the days. I have my lance and the wedding script in my hand. I say, brothers and sisters, families and friends, brother X and sister Y have declared to me their intention to unite with love under will in the mystery of marriage. Is it your will to witness their vows? I asked the whole congregation. And uh, the deacon helps the, instruct the people to rise and say it is. So this would be uh, uh, sort of parallel to that part in a, in a normal kind of Protestant, Protestant Christian wedding ceremony. If anyone here has reason to believe all these people, well, this is sort of that thing. Is it your will to witness these vows? I don't give them a chance to object. Shit. It's not their freaking will. <laughs> they, if it's not their will, then get out. <laughs> okay. The priest to the bride and groom. Please come forward. The priestess uh, is is on the altar. Remember, this is where that is in the mass. Priest hasn't pulled the, the veil yet. The priestess elevates the cup. So she's up on the high altar and elevates the cup. The bride, followed by the bridesmaid, and the groom, followed by the best man, slowly advance up the sides of the temple, stopping uh at the altar of incense between them. So uh, here's a little thing. There would be the, the high altar, and there's the fire altar there, the little square in the center, and the font there at the west of the, the temple. And here is our bride, is the moon, and the groom has a guileless, happy face. Okay. The priest says, The Queen of Heaven hath said, For I am divided for love's sake, for the chance of union. The priestess lowers the cup in the back there. Then I turn toward the groom. Brother Y, do you affirm that it is your will to unite with Sister X? with love under will in the mystery of marriage? The groom better say, I do, or there will be no feast. Then I turn to the bride. Sister X, do you affirm that it is your will to unite with Brother Y, with love under will in the mystery of marriage? I do, or I do. I say, so with thy all thou hast no right but to do thy will. Do that, and no other shall say nay. Then I make five crosses on the couple. The first three in a triangle on the bride and groom. The third, fourth one on the groom alone. The fifth one on the bride alone. Now, if you're familiar with the Mass, those are the same crosses in the same order 
that that the priest makes over the cup and the paten uh, on the on the high altar uh, prior to the climax of the ceremony. I turn to the groom. Why? Now, brother, why? Repeat after me, and he reads the vow that the that the groom has has written, and that can be as long or as short. Hopefully, as short, and as sweet, and as sincere, and as concise as possible. But if not, this is where. I fear they might ramble on. But after he, he, he says his vow to the personal vow to the bride, uh, I say, so mote it be. And the deacon and all the people repeat that, so mote it be. Then I turn to the bride. X, repeat after me. And then I read her vow and she repeats it step by step so so i repeat it they they have given me the script and i says i promise always to clean up you <laughs> whatever okay uh the bride faces the groom and repeats that and i say so moted me and then all the people say so moted me so the priest now, I turn and ascend the first step of the dais. The groom gives the wand, remember the groom has a wooden wand, to the best man. And the bride gives the roses that she has to the bridesmaid. The bride and groom advance just forward of the altar of incense. Okay. So... The, that's the altar of incense, that little short one there. So and they're forward of that. And I'm on the first step right here. Constance is on the altar right there. I descend again. I get off that step. I give the lance to the deacon to hold. I've had a lance in my hand all this time. And, the, and I receive the rings from the best man and the bridesmaid. I take the rings to the font and dip them in the water. I take them to the altar of incense and I pass them through the incense smoke. Then I ascend the high altar and present the rings to the priestess. In other words, I get all three steps, go up to Constance on the, on the altar who kisses, uh, kisses the rings. I take the rings and I descend and I give the bride's ring to the groom and the groom's ring to the bride. I take back my lance from the deacon and I get back on the first step and turn to face the bride and groom. The groom faces the bride and if, she, if he doesn't, me and the deacon turn him around and face each other. Let this ring be a token of the love that seals my pledge, is his line. The groom places the ring on the bride's finger. The bride faces the groom. Let this ring be the token that seals my pledge. The bride places the ring on the groom's finger. Then I say, sort of standing like the, like the hermit, I say, there is no bond that can unite the divided but love. And then I give the groom my lance to hold in his left hand. See, that's his left hand reaching around in front of himself to grab that. Okay. And I say to him, in thou be the essence of the life of the sun. And then the priest, I, receives the cup from the priestess and gives it to the bride to hold in her hand. So I 
I turned around and grabbed the cup or the chalice from Constance and then I give it to the bride to hold in her left hand. And I say, in thou be the essence of the joy of the earth. So the bride and groom hold the weapons as in Atu 6. Okay, that's Atu 6. With their left uh, with their left hands. The priest joins the right hand of the bride and the groom uh, held up at breast level. See, that's just like that. For he, then I say, for he is ever a sun and she a moon, but to him is the wing's secret flame and to her the stooping starlight. The priestess raises her arms in back there in invocation. The best man and the bridesmaid draw their swords and form an arch of steel above the bridegroom and priest. I got to admit, it looks really cool. Okay. And it goes clinky, clinky, and it's everybody. And it sort of makes a vaulted, a vaulted cathedral, a mini one. Then I make a cross with my thumb in the name of the Father. I make a circle with my open hand in the name of the Mother. Then I make a cross with my thumb between the index and medius. In the name of the serpent and the lion, I make the sign of the enterer, just like that. And I pause, and then I make the sign of silence. The priestess lowers her arms. The priest raises his arms as comprehending the whole couple. And by the virtue of the authority vested in me by the state of California and Ecclesia Gnostica Catholica, I proclaim you husband and wife. The best man and the bridesmaid sheath their swords. The bride and groom return the lance and cup to the priest. They descend between the altar of incense and the font. The best man, the bridesmaid, give the roses and wand back to the bride and groom. The priest returns the cup to the priestess. The priest and priestess face the couple and raise their weapons in salute. The bride says to the groom. Now this had to be rehearsed, okay. Good ten minutes before the ceremony. The bride says to the groom, I am above you and in you. My ecstasy is in yours. My joy is to see your joy. And the groom says to the bride, Come, lift up thine heart and rejoice. We are one. We are none. And then they kiss. You have to admit, it's pretty damn cool. Then they turn to face the shrine. Then I say, Omnien Dios, duo nunum, unus in nil, hec nec quatro, nec omnia, nec duo, nec unus, nec nil sunt. Gloria Patri, et Matri, et Filio, et Filiae, et Spiritui Sancto externo, et Spiritui Sancto interno, ut erat esterit, in seculum seculorum. The all within this couple, this couple within the one, the one within the void, these are neither four, nor all, nor two, nor one, nor not. Glory to the Father, and to the Mother, and to the Son, and to the Daughter, and to the Holy Spirit without, and to the Holy Spirit within, which was and is and ever shall be world without end. And then I ascend the three steps of the altar, close the veil with the lance 
I turn and make a cross on the bride and groom three times. The Lord bless you. The Lord enlighten your minds and comfort your hearts and sustain your bodies. The Lord bring you to the accomplishment of your true wills. The great work, the summum bonum, true wisdom and perfect happiness. Music. I go out and the deacon and the children follow. The bride and groom remain briefly with the people to accept their felicitations and then depart. So that is a version. Okay, it's, this is not an official any anything. The mass was was official, but this uh, uh, this was a special uh, uh, amended version uh, that uh, one couple that I've married over the years have uh, have wanted to uh, to be their wedding ceremony. So that's it for Sunday school. The Lord bless you. The Lord enlighten your minds and comfort your hearts and sustain your bodies. The Lord bring you to the accomplishment of your true wills. The great work, the summum bonum, true wisdom and perfect happiness. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will.